Hello and welcome back to my small little library. A little bit of an awkward angle today but um, yeah he crawled onto my lap and he um, obviously wants to stay here so we're going to do this with him on my lap as long as he wants to stay. <laughs> um, yeah that is the effect of my husband isn't home. He clings to me. So I want to talk about books with female main characters today and especially my favorite ones are the ones that just stuck in my brain and that I think about periodically again because I feel like even though like I don't really like look into like what gender the main characters or anything I don't care either way if it's like a male or a female I don't I don't care for it you know um, I never really thought about my favorite like male or female main characters. I'm sorry. Okay, it seems like my lap wasn't comfortable enough. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, um, I I don't ever really think about whether the main character is female or male. I don't care either way. But I thought why not take the opportunity and talk about my favorite female characters. So I thought about it a little bit, and I've come up with two, four, six, eight. Nine books um, that personally were female main characters that really stuck with me and that I really really enjoyed reading from their perspective and I thought we could just talk about them and um, yeah. Uh, a lot of them are books that are really known um, so yeah probably not a surprise to a lot of people but I still wanted to share them with you so the first one we're going to talk about is Bloody Rose. This is the second part in, um, oh, I don't know, Kings of the Wild is the first one. I don't know if the series has a name, but yeah, it's the second part and our main character is not Bloody Rose, um, but the our main character is called Tam Hashford and this is a really, really funny fantasy and so is our main character. I really really love her. She kind of like throws herself into adventure and is just like, I'm up to it. I want to do this and so I will go with you as a bard and have adventures. And she's just, she's not afraid of any situation. She takes everything in stride. She doesn't want to, you know, complain or anything. And if the rest of the group who are already really established, um, like Monster Hunter group, um, when they do something, she's like, oh, we're doing that? okay why not you know and she has a lot of fun on the way and I really really like her character and she really grows in the book because at the beginning you know she's just more or less fleeing home and obviously at the end of it she's like she has grown so much and it's such a fun read so yeah she was one that really, really stuck with me for like how funny but also like how just like all around accepting she is and yeah that was a lot of fun reading that i don't think he likes that i'm talking <laughs> so the second one i can't really tell you why i particularly love her but this gen in general this book just stuck with me when i read it um i don't know that is a dowry of blood by st gibson and um this is like an alternative version of Dracula with like the focus on the wives of Dracula and our main character is one of the wives of Dracula and I feel like Just just the way She's handling things because obviously Dracula is not a nice person like in no version is Dracula ever the nice one, you know and here he also like keeps being this aloof douchebag and she just tries to make the best of it because obviously he makes her into a vampire and she's kind of stuck to him, kind of not. But the way she behaves and the way she kind of like takes advantage of the small things just really, really stuck with me. I don't know. I really, really enjoyed her character even though I, you know, she didn't have like this one thing that stands out for her, but she was so nice to read from her perspective so I don't really know what draws me to the main character from this book but I love her she's just cool I mean I guess you 
have to be cool to be Dracula's wife, you know. But um, yeah, she, she's, she's just calling to me. Um, so I really um, enjoyed reading about her. Next one we have is a classic I think a lot of us love. Um, and that's Holmes Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. And I mean, Sophie is just great. I love her, you know, her, her being like this really like... A little bit of like a boring grayish character and then her coming out of her shelf realizing that she has autonomy in her life and that she can do things and her not putting up with house shit the the book is a little bit like crasser than the movie so if you've only watched the movie um i feel like sophie does even better in the book because she's just you know she sometimes just puts her foot down and is like no, <laughs> we're doing it my way. And I kind of love her for that. I I really, really love her and how she grows in the book and how she how she changes and um you know the fact that she at some points, you know, is an old lady and not herself kind of helps that because she kind of has this costume on that hides who she really is. But then she realizes, you know, oh, the person I was before maybe is also not who I really am. I just had to get the opportunity to change and to grow. And that I really loved about this book. Even though Howell really is much more of an asshole in the book than in the movie. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> then the next one, I think, maybe more on the controversial side. But I really like Temperance Brennan. Um by well it's the temperance balance series by kathy rice um or bones the tv series i much prefer the books to the tv series even though i like the tv series i feel like she has much like a much better character in the books i felt like they kind of made her a little bit of a caricature in the tv series like they emphasized on the weirder aspects of her character and made her much less of a normal human being you know but here she's just like you know she loves her work and she lives for her work and i think that's a cool thing you know to have a job that you really love doing and um yeah does she get into unnecessary problems yeah she does you know she isn't always like the smartest when it comes to that but i feel like you know the passion she has for what she does and um just like her life story it's all really really interesting and she just tries you know she tries and she does her best to get everything under one roof and i really like her character for that i don't know i feel like she's one of those you know just get it done female characters she doesn't she needs help but she's not a helpless character you know what i mean so i i don't know i feel like especially since this is one of the first like female characters that i really like where i realized it was like a woman um even though I generally, you know, I'm not much of a person who prefers one or the other. I think that was one of the first ones where I really realized, oh, this is like, you know, a really strong woman who does what she wants and what she thinks is the right thing. And she's not, you know, getting bogged down by the males in the story. So, yeah, for that, I really, really like the series. And I, I mean, obviously, I don't judge these books on how much I like them. I judge the main character so obviously i don't feel like the book has to be brilliant for the main character to be brilliant so yeah i know a lot of people find the um kathy wright books rather average but i really enjoy reading them and i do really enjoy temperance Bennett. Another one I really enjoyed, where I was kind of surprised that I really enjoyed her, is To Sleep in the Sea of Stars by Christopher Pellini. I feel like this is m rather similar to the um, a Dowry of Blood. There isn't really like one thing where I was like, oh, I really like the main character. But I do keep going back and thinking about her story and the decisions she makes along the way and you know she has like quite the hefty journey in here and the ending is i feel like really interesting it's not like your happy-go-lucky standard ending and i really enjoyed that and i felt like the book was really 
But the main character really made the story better, you know? Sometimes you can... You have like main characters where you can be like, oh, it could have been anybody else. But I feel like she really, really made the story better um, with how she was and how she just her decision making and what she felt was right. And, you know, not listening to everybody, but like making decisions and sticking to them, but listening when it's necessary. I really like that. So... Yeah, it's a hefty book and obviously you get to know a lot about the main character because there are so many pages but I feel like she's like a really really sturdy female main character. I think that is what I like about her so much. She's just this really sturdy presence that I really enjoyed throughout the book. Now we have one which I was so surprised about when I first got this book because I bought it secondhand. I had no idea what it was about and it's a Stephen King book. And it's called Dolores Claiborne, and I haven't really heard much about this book, but the story really surprised me, and the main character is just such a badass, and I love her for it so much, because she had a hard life, um, she worked as like a maid um, for this like richer woman, and um, she pretty much has to take a lot of abuse from the woman she works for, and this, everybody thinks pretty much that she killed the woman, um, but they can't really, you know, um get her for it they don't really have the the um the clues for that so they can't do anything but like you know everybody that lives in their area is like oh she she probably did that and then you get the story told by dolores our main character and it's so much darker and it's so much better and it's so much more oomph in the story and it's amazing and she's one badass woman and I loved it she I always have her in the back of my mind because she's really cool she's just if you have never read this go ahead buy yourself a copy um as I said I got this really nice um secondhand copy it's just you know it's one of those stories where I'm like you have you have to read it at least once um, even though, you know, normally I'm not that much into contemporary and I feel like this is really contemporary, at least for King. It was so interesting to read and it's so great to have pretty much the main character retell her story. And just like everything coming out and you're like realizing like she's getting more badass the more you read about her. It's great. I love it. Um, yeah, I think she's one of my absolute favorites. Like, she's always there in the back of my mind. Then we have the one I feel like... It's it's not a surprise, but yeah. The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Um, Vin, just... I love her. I feel like, especially over, like, the trilogy, um, she has so much growth and she's so real, you know, with her fears and her... I feel like... PTSD-like symptoms and she's she's trying so hard to to learn from it and to grow from it and she manages that and then you know learning new things about herself and accepting these new facts and merging them with the, the stuff she knew about herself before I really felt that I was one of those children that felt really pushed into a mold that they felt they couldn't come out of and it took me quite some time but I'm now really really comfortable with myself um but I felt like it took a lot of like work to learn what I like and to stand up for what I like and to not be like oh no, no I don't like that I I can't like that you know because it doesn't fit fit into the mold that people put me in and it took me myself quite some time to get out of that and I feel like you can really see that in Vin especially if you go to like part two and part three in the series like it, it it gets really obvious you know when she struggles with something because she enjoys something and she is like oh I, I'm not supposed to enjoy that but it's like her feeling she's not, not supposed to enjoy it even though it's like obviously something she's allowed to enjoy so yeah I could really, really feel for Vin, and I really, really liked that, and it really, really resonated with me. Then we have one of my all-time favorite characters, Coraline. <laughs> I just love Coraline. I feel like, you know, she has such an amazing attitude for a child that gets 
obviously really neglected by her parents and just I mean obviously probably most of you know the story of Coraline you know but I always said like even when I never read the book but only watched the movie because I did watch the movie before I ever picked up the book because I just didn't know it existed as a book but I feel like if you've read the book it hurts so much to see her be so neglected in the beginning but she's still such a nice and polite girl and um I feel like I often really, really dislike children as main characters. I don't enjoy books that much with them. This one I absolutely love, so I had to include her because obviously she's a child. I don't really enjoy children in books as the main character, but that works just so well and you're rooting for her from the beginning. And so, yeah, that is maybe it's one of my all-time favorite books. So, and movies, you know, but um, so, yeah, I just feel like she has to have her place on this list and then let's do the last one and this one is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant and for this one our main character she lost her sister at sea and she doesn't really know what has happened and the company doesn't want to tell you um, it's mermaid horror and she pretty much makes this goal to get on, onto like the boat to go where her sister vanished to find answers and she does everything she can to find those answers and at the same time she's really passionate about um nature and preserving animal life and especially like animals that live in the ocean because he, she is oh god she's a biologist but like a ma marine biologist i think is the right um title and she does so much for herself and for her sister and also for nature and just her whole like character the way she approaches life and doing things i felt really really great and i felt she made like a really really good horror book main character because she wasn't like this like scream your head off and run character she she stood her ground as much as she could if you know the book you know what i mean i mean it's a horror book so you know there are bad things happening but yeah she's she stands around as much as she can and um you know she works hard to survive and i really like her for that i don't know she I, it's it's a book that i have read reread multiple times now and i always really really like just reading about her and her perspective and the way she does things i enjoy it so yeah that is the nine books i took out of my collection where i really really enjoyed the main character and the main character is female so yeah i might do one for the guys as well maybe in like a few weeks or something like that but um yeah that will be well it will be as hard let's be honest um i mean i have a lot of books where the main characters are like mixed where you have like um, multiple characters getting like the same amount of time um i pretty much left out those out because i always have a harder time if like you have a lot of characters and they all get the same time as the main character i always have a harder time um choosing if i like them or not obviously if you have a book only about one character mainly then it's a lot easier you know but um yeah i hope you liked my video maybe leave in the comments below what are your favorite female characters in books and um, from which books they are so that i can look into more because i always need new recommendations you know and yeah hopefully i will see you in the next video